Hey, how's it going? And today I'm going to show you how to transition or blend from a player character camera or gameplay camera to a level sequence camera or a placed in the scene camera. And this is actually relatively easy to do, but there are a couple little gotchas along the way and I'll show you what those are. We're just going to right click and I'm just in the third person template right now. We're just going to go into cinematics level sequence and double click into this. And then what we're gonna do is just click this camera icon right there. And it does a number of things at one time. It spawns in a camera, it creates camera cuts, and then it puts us in pilot camera mode. So in pilot camera mode, we can just fly down and position our camera. So I'm just hitting W, the right mouse button, and I'm turning my scroll wheel backwards to slow down. And what I'm doing is I'm just positioning myself into a shot here so I'm just gonna get a shot of the mannequin walking up this ramp or standing on this ramp so right now I'm just placing the spawning camera in position because you'll see up here it says pilot camera mode so once I'm happy with that I can also adjust the uh, the aperture and bring everything in focus so once I'm happy with that I can actually come out eject from that mode and then just be in my regular flying around mode here. And you'll see the camera's placed right over there, right where I want it. Now to do this, one of the things I've noticed, and let's see if this is an issue, is it's because it's a spawned in camera, I think that creates some issues later. So what we're gonna do is we're going to right click and just change it to a, convert it to a possessable camera, which basically just makes it a regular old camera with no funny business going on. So you'll notice we don't see the lightning bolt over here anymore. It's just a, another camera like any other camera. But initially, I guess it comes in as a spawned camera. But I think that creates an issue where we lose our binding because it is spawned in later when we go to record it. So we're almost where we need to be here. What we're gonna do now is, the one thing I realized is that when you're changing camera positions, it's better like if you give yourself three or four seconds for that transition to happen so it's not so jarring or abrupt. If you only give like a one second for the transition, I think it's too much. So what we're going to do is extend the length of our sequence here. So just press control and scroll well out. And then we can grab this in frame marker here and just drag it out a little ways longer and then get the clip here and drag it out as well. So we have a little bit, three or four seconds between our transition. Now once that's done, we can go ahead and select camera cuts here. On the camera cuts track, we right click and go can blend. And then once we do that, you'll see these little triangles appear in the upper left and right corners. And when you see the double arrow, left click and you can drag. And this is basically the transition time between the player character camera and the level sequence camera or the camera that's been placed in the scene. And so we want, like I said, we want about three or four seconds. So we'll just drag it. Oops, that's dragging the whole clip. You gotta get those double arrows. So I think that's good about there. The transition should roughly match the ease in and kind of ease out time. And that's pretty much it. The only thing we need to do now is go in the content browser and drag our level sequence into the scene. We probably just want to go ahead and save all to while we're at it. We don't want this to trigger automatically. So what we're going to do is go into the, make sure the level sequence is selected in the scene and we'll go to the level, open level blueprint, right click and create a reference to that sequence, the sequencer. And then we'll right click again and we're going to go ahead and get a keyboard press of one just because that's close to our finger, and then drag off of here and go play. And then we're just going to play the sequence. And this allows us to control it. Now what I've noticed is, in doing this, is that if I leave the sequencer open and I hit play, the sequence will start playing. So now that we're done, let's just close out of the sequencer altogether. Okay, now we should be good to go. I can just hit play and we're just in the regular third person player character like nothing unusual is going on. But now, and there's our camera over there, we can't see it. I'm gonna walk up here on this ramp and now I'm gonna hit one. 
And you see our camera transitions to the sequence camera or the placed in scene camera. And it, it'll hold in that position for a few seconds. And then it's gonna go back to the player character camera. And this whole time I can also move the player character. And that's how easy it is to transition between the two cameras. Now I wanna show you, what if you wanted to record this? Well, we should be able to do that. What we can do is go up to Windows, go to Cinematics and go to the Take Recorder. And here for the Take Recorder, for our source, let me just double click on something. Let me just go ahead and check one thing here real fast. I'll double click on the sequencing and notice it came off the camera cut. So let's put it back on camera cuts there. And then let's go ahead and select camera cuts as our source. And then all I have to do is hit play and record. And it's going to give us the three, two, one countdown. And then I'm just going to walk over here, stand right there. And then I'll hit one and let it record. And we'll wait for it to transition back. I guess I held this shot a little long. It just takes a second to transition back. And then we're back and I can hit escape. And let's see what we got. So we'll go into the content browser. We'll go into cinematics, double click here, double click here. We'll open up our sequencer. It says the ob we must have lost the object binding, but I don't think it affects anything. So let's, I'm going to hit control and zoom out here. We're going to unlock this. Yeah, so we, we've lost our binding somewhere along the way, but it's not, I don't think it's going to affect our shot. So we select camera cuts here and we go play. We should be able to see our scene play. But what you'll notice is there's no blending in here, right? And you might think, oh, what the heck? This isn't what I signed on for. I was supposed to be able to see this, right? So I notice that goes away when I'm playing the sequence. That's interesting. So I'm going to escape or hit stop here. Stop. I guess it's going to play out. Where is my stop? Well, I guess it just plays out. What we can do is simply click on this clip here. Oh, one thing is turn off snapping. And I move that before I meant to click on camera cuts and go can blend. And then what we can do is drag this here like this. Click here and drag this over like that. And it basically gives us our blend back. So then we can tighten this up because we, it looks like we lost a little bit of time there. My, let me put this on the front. I can't grab this here and shorten this up. And then let's go ahead and just render it out and see what we get. Don't save. And let's see what we got. If it works. Yep. There we go. So it's good enough, right? <laughs> anyway, I hope you found this helpful. And if you're subscribed, thank you. And if you're not subscribed, I really would do appreciate it if you can. So take care. Have a great day. And I'll talk to you next time.